60 Minutes with Angela starts right now. Listen to this, quote, let it be known that I will not hesitate to commence the process of mobilizing, sensitizing, and conscientizing like minds and team up with other stakeholders to drum up the necessary support that will birth a Southern candidate for the People's Democratic Party, end of quote. So says my guest today on the program, a former information commissioner in Edo State under Governor Adams Oshiomole. He's also spokesman for former military president Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida. And in 2019, he was the spokesperson of the Presidential Campaign Council of the People's Democratic Party. Kazima Fegwa joins me on the program today. I wanted to introduce you with PDP, People's Democratic Party, but I wasn't even sure if you are still in that party. Are you still in the PDP? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still a bona fide member of the PDP. Uh, since I rejoined the party in 2017, I haven't left. Right. It's, on, it's, it's true that in 2020, I was suspended for one month. So after one month, I was integrated back to the party. Okay. So I don't, uh, I have no other party for now. And I've told myself, if I must join any other party, it has to be retirement. Mm. I don't want to stay, move here, move there. No, no. And be active. There was a reason why I actually left the APC in 2017, because having been part of the process in 2014, 2015, mm. I was expecting to see, you know, a spontaneous yes. takeoff of action that will help to relaunch the country mm. on the super highway of development in terms of reforms, in terms of issues, in terms of uh, policy formation and all of that. Yes. You know, the APC had a manifesto that was very Robust, edible, yes. edible mm. that you can eat. But no sooner the president came on board, then he jettisoned it, and that became the fundamental flaw, ab initio, of APC's uh, several faulty steps. Mm. Because I remember you were a commissioner for information in Edo State under yeah. the APC uh, administration yeah. of um, Adams Oshomole, yeah. and some people say you, you run with the rabbit and you hunt with the hare, you, you're on both sides. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't that I joined. I joined Adam Shomole in 2011. Mm. You know, to campaign for his second term because he came asking for my support, and uh, I gave it after the election. He insisted I have to work in the government. I said no. He insisted. He prevailed. One week, two weeks, three weeks, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Then the final analysis, I said, okay, let me let me go and work. Mm -hmm. So I became his special advisor of media. Yes. Have been issued. Then later, when the opportunity came, he, he made me the commissioner for information before the expiration of the tenure in 2016. Yes. And so, for me, it's not. I'm not an itinerant politician. I don't see myself as one. I've, I see myself more as a media practitioner uh, who, 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 who is busy doing his work, mm -hmm. but found himself 
in the environment of politicians mm -hmm. and because of the rules of the game you have to belong to a party yes if they want to appoint you for example they will say come and become a party member and all of that that's just it mm -hmm. but other than that i see myself more as a nigerian who is passionate to see you know a difference yes. in the way a manner we engage you know governance mm -hmm. In this part of the world. Yeah. Thankfully, you said you are still in the PDP. It appears to me that the party does not seem to want to restrict the presidential ticket to the South, perhaps because they see President Buhari as uh, APC's northern candidate, and they feel that they, the PDP, are entitled to have their own northern candidate. Um, of course, the last uh, president of the PDP was uh, the late Umar Musa Yara Dwa. May he so yeah, that's a northern, northern time, candidate. Yeah. Um, northern president was Yara Dwa. May he so rest in peace. And so his, uh, his tenure was truncated after two years. So perhaps there is a sense, you know, of, of right or wrong, whichever way you want to look at it, for the party saying, we want our own northern president. I find it very distasteful, very discomfiting, and quite disheartening when I hear people who are supposed to be elder statesmen, when they come up with curious arithmetics to begin to bifurcate the country on the platform of, oh, the North did this one, and this one, there's uh, two years left, and so it is nauseating. The point is, Nigeria got independence in 1960. Yes. Till date will be 62 years, October 1st, 2022. That means we are 62, we'll be 62 years old. Now, you cannot be using the fractional, you know, arithmetics of 1999 to date to write the whole history of Nigeria as if we started the country in 1999. No. In those years, 1960 to date, the North had occupied power for 48 years. Out of 62. Out of 62. So, where is even the morality ab initio for you to even begin to say you are aspiring under any guise after President Buhari that the power should remain in the North again? That's one. Yeah. Secondly, the President Buhari will be completing eight years next year. He is not president of the All Progressive Congress. He is president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and commander in chief of Nigeria Armed Forces. His policies and programs are for the entire 200 million plus Nigerians. So, my agitation and my position is very clear. Keep all your curious, dubious arithmetics aside. Let us look at the country in a plural society like Nigeria, where you have over 470 ethnic configurations, with the delicate balance of our heterogeneous components. You need to balance all the power algorithms. You need to balance all the equations so that People will have sense of ownership of the country, sense of belongingness to the union. Otherwise, once you put in place measures that tend to suggest that some persons are more Nigerian than the others, yes. then politics of exclusion will now be the order of the day rather than politics of inclusion. So my position is very clear. And I think it's also audible to the deaf and visible to the blind that all these agitations going on in the country are a function of the dysfunctionalities in the system, one, the obvious marginalization, the injustices, and the lack of fairness. That is why you kept hearing diction like nepotism, favoritism, Selective amnesia, cronyism, all, you know, taking place within our geopolitical landscape. If 
the other way to be right. We won't be hearing of all of this. Look at agitation in the southeast. What are they asking for? Look at the old one republic agitation. What are they asking for? Look at bam banditry. Look at kidnapping. Look at all of this. When you listen to them, there is a missing link in the connecting dots that make up this country. So when I hear all these kind of permutations, uh, arguments, commentaries, by persons who, who some of them who possess PhD, PhD, for God's sake, and I'm wondering, Angela, is it about pecuniary interest or because you feel that your stomach infrastructure is one that should drive your mental, you know, uh, acumen? Uh, or what? Is, or what could be the motivation? The motivation for some people are saying, look, the North has 19 states, and it would seem that they think they have the numbers. So if the APC feels a southern candidate and the PDP feels a northern candidate, it appears that many people think all the northerners will queue behind the northern candidate of the PDP and that with their 19 states, they have the numbers to swing that election. <laughs> Another product of lazy scholarship. I call it lazy because I am trained to interrogate and using empirical uh, foundation or basis or statistics, I should be able to connect the dots in our political equation. How do I mean? Now, in 2019, yes. we fitted a northern candidate in PDP who, in our estimation, will be popular enough to contend with a failing president Buhari, with all the agitations, with all the crises, hunger, poverty, impoverishment, dislocations, economic predatories, we thought our candidate will be able to shine from the northeast zone. So when I hear this kind of narration, oh, yeah, PDP is trying to be strategic. Yes. You want to give the north. Yes. It can, it, the they who told you that the anger in the minds of the Southerners will, will allow them to vote for a PDP candidate if they don't if the candidate is not from the South? Haven't you had leaders of thoughts of the Middle West zone mm. saying that they don't want a northern candidate in 2023? 20, 20, 20, that they should give to the South because they duly deserve to be so given. It is not so much about the geopolitical zone of the individual. First, it's about whether there is equity in such recognition as a candidate, yes. whether there is fairness, whether there is some level of balance. In 2019, the Southern aspirants dropped their aspirations to allow room for all Northern aspirants to be candidate of the PDP. There was no single Southern aspirant in 2019. In recognition of the fact that in 2015 President Jonathan was the candidate, and so for that for that reason, there is a need for us to balance the equation. Yes, they are loud enough. Now it's only natural, Angela, if it is not a product of greed, that the northern aspirants allow the South to produce a candidate in show of reciprocal love affection, understanding, and balance. So when you see people like uh, former Senate President Bukola Saraki and, uh, you know, Atiku Abubaka of Tambua. PDP's Tambua, Governor of Sokoto, all Balang, coming together man. and saying they're looking for a consensus candidate for the PDP, what comes to mind then? It, 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 is, it is morally wrong for aspirants of a particular zone of the country to be driving a consensus without integrating and involving other aspirants from the southern zone. That is where the conspiracy comes in. So I read your opinion on the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar. You've used some words like perennial, uh, you know, contest, aspirant, aspirant and all that. Um, you said, I'm quoting you now, those urging him, that's Atiku, those urging him on are just after his money. No more, no less. End of quote. You still stand by this? Yes, of course. 
You see, at this age, which is the age of ideas, you, know, you need leaders like Atiku Abaka to urge and guide the younger ones to take up the gauntlets from the point of failure of his own generation to a new generation that is interrogative, that is constructive, constructively engaging, and that can collectively bargain for what should be the future and the vision of a new country, Nigeria, in the 21st century. I don't want us to be detained by continuously indulging the essences, quote unquote, of those who are already fatigued who are tired, who should be resting so that they don't convert the Asso Villa to a retirement home. You see, your strategy is as good as the persons you are using to execute them. Yes. We can say, okay, do not have it, PDP. The APC, they will produce a southern county, right? Yes. On election day, rather than for me to travel to my village to ensure that I'm de I deliver my polling units, I will sit down in Abuja and be drinking my coffee. What happens? The voice you will have gotten as a result of my intervention in my little village of Okwela, yeah. you won't get it. Because I want to sabotage the system. Or, alternatively, I can say, okay, my followers, vote for APC. Since they have a, a southern candidate. You see, in politics, the much I have read about democracies in plural societies is a study that people must learn from. As small as Switzerland is, their democracy is structured along seven contortional bases. If you are president, this group takes presidency, the VP goes to this. Yes. The other person go, takes this and all that. That's why they have lived and they have developed. Nobody is going to say this, part, this group is dominating. If you produce a president this time, we already know that next time this, this group is going to produce. produce. And in other societies that are plural in nature, how do you balance the political equation? If you don't balance it, Angela, what you get are going to be protestations, agitations that would distract the government in place from performing its governance responsibility. People are not looking at that. They see not allowing the South to produce a candidate in PDP or not producing even presidency in 2023 from the South will spell doom for this country. Go and write today's date down. People just, you just think that Nigeria is still a work in progress. Fine. But the challenges facing us, they are so daunting, so enormous, that the politics aspect of it must be stabilized must be cultivated to a desired end. Go and check revolutions in countries where they have happened. They play on the sentiments of the loopholes. They play on sentiments of injustices, marginalization, exclusion, to, to gain the momentum of other citizenry to go out there and ask for regime change. Those people who are carrying out those curious arithmetics and figures and telling you this, telling you that, Please next time they do that, ask them. If in 2023, a northern candidate is given now, and he, and he fails the exam, that's the election, are they saying in 2027 again, because he didn't win, they should still give them the candidature until they win? Join us again <laughs> after the break. <laughs> Now, you are also angry at the former uh, vice president. You say that after 2019, Atiku Abubakar retired to Dubai in the United Arab, Arab Emirates and abandoned the party. And I thought, well, having lost that election in 2019, what was he supposed to do? <laughs> you, don't, you don't say you lose election... Uh, until after you have 
dispense with the tribunal and the litigations arising from that election. Right. After the election, it's like a general that has gone to war. Mm. When the dust of war has not simmered, the general escaping through the back door, allowing the troops to find their way back to the barracks. That, is, that would be a poor marksmanship in military uh, parlance, right. so to speak. Now, he was the one who led us to war in 2019. We expected him to retire to the barracks, sit down, take a critical assessment of what happened at the war front mm. so that we can learn from that. The party can also learn from that. He instead ran away to Dubai for two good years in communicado to a lot of us. And we were here, we prosecuted the tribunal. Imagine how it would have been if Elijah Tiku was seen sitting down in that tribunal in court. As the candidate. As the candidate, looking at the judges to say, okay, let me see what you're going to do this time. Because we had very good grounds, you know, to knock off that election. But again, there's what they call public policy in law. Hey, if, you, if the person, if you are crying more than they believe, mm. and the person for whom is the epitome of the candidature, the symbol of the struggle, is not seen. In the minds of the judges, they will seem that, oh, okay, the man has even given up. Mm. After all, he's not, he's not around. Yes. So he's in, he's in Dubai. So why are you people bothering yourself? So it's like us crying more than they believed. That is not a good sign of leadership. And when people keep talking about, oh, Atiku is a leader, is this, is that, and I'm wondering, I say, what kind of leadership? It's like me watching uh, Dino Melaye, Senator Dino Melaye, a couple of days back on um, uh, Channel's TV, saying that God spoke to him that Atiku Boka will be the candidate, will be the president of Nigeria in 2023. And I'm saying, what? My friend Dino, Dino again, I said, no. You told us about President Buhari in 2015 that you saw, it, you saw him as a Mezar. Yes. And we have seen Buhari now that is more uh, like uh, an SS luggage than what is desirable for Nigerians at this time. Well, all of us, everybody, whether you like it, the Buhari brand has been completely defeated and deflated. My advice to Alaji Atiku was a very profound one. But when people speak truth, because in politics when you speak truth, you are almost considered a lonely man. Because politics is a game where those who speak the truth are in the minority. Those who speak, who are, who speak the lies, tell the lies, falsehood and all of that, they are in the majority. But I would not stop telling a man like him, first on account of his age, second on the fact that he has been perpetually contesting presidency since 1992. During the MKO Abiola Kegibe era, he contested. This is even Way, Way beyond our democracy, yes. Mm. So if you have spent 32 years of your life contesting and seeking ticket to preserve the country and you're not getting it, Angela, the honorous thing to do is for you to take a bow. People must know when to exit from the corridors of power. It doesn't remove anything from your content, from your character, from your name. Be an elder statesman guide the younger ones through an evolutionary process of acquiring power and sustaining same. Instead of continuously saying you want to be the king rather than being a king maker. Yeah. It is possible that the, the, the destiny of life that God did not make you, did not yeah. add the, you, know, be, you being the king mm. in your own destiny. Yes. Or if you want to force your way, too bad. So my advice is a patriotic one. But the people have been calling me a man of name. I, 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 I was going to go there. Because yes. Some of his supporters are really miffed at you and they're saying that the only reason you're criticizing Atiku Abubakar is because you have a candidate you're promoting within the PDP and that candidate is from the South. South. So I'm going to ask you straight <laughs> up, are you working for the River uh, State Governor? Yes, Obike. You see, they have said all manners of things to the point that even if possible, they might they might also conclude that I'm being spoon-fed each time I have opportunity to eat a meal. Please, when you see Wiki, tell him that I really want to work for him. I'll be proud to work for him or any other person from the South who has the courage 
the guts, the boldness to look at issues on the, on the face or persons in the face and say it as it is. And I have my admiration for Wiki. He may not be the best of individuals in terms of his style. Yes. What has style got to do with this? But Wiki is not one person who will govern or preside using body language. You must know where he belongs. You must know what is in his mind. Because he will tell you. Because he will tell you. He will speak out. Oh, some person is coming. Oh, if you know we can tell him, he shouldn't be talking. Somebody should be talking for him. Why, why would he not talk? We need an unusual Nigerian from the southern part of the country to solve an unusual situation that we find ourselves. That Wike is an unusual Nigerian in his style. A man who doesn't believe in psychophancy is my kind of person. Or Rankadede, Rankadede kind of politics yeah. that you know, other persons are used to. That's my kind of person. Blunt, but fair. I'd rather go to war with such a man who can risk his own life wanting to die for a cause yes. than support an Atiku Abubakar or someone else who when they hear the sound of knockout, they will escape through the back door to Dubai. <laughs> Angela, I like people who can confront situations boldly with uncommon guts. That is the only way we can solve our problems. The question of the Southeast now, saying that they're marginalized, and everyone saying, well, you know, people of the Southeast, they've always voted PDP. And even till now, they're still partial to the PDP. Now, if the PDP will zone it to the South, you think it is, it is fair for the Southeast to get the ticket? And if you do, do you think fielding a man like Yesom Wiki, Yesom, being an Igbo sounding name to me, Will that satisfy the agitation of people of the Southeast? You see, let's, let's get it straight. It's not even about Yes and Wiki. It's about the propriety of having a Southerner as candidate of the PDP and a Southerner as candidate of the APC. From the uh, reality so far, and the political landscape. APC is sure going to go to take its candidate from the south. PDP should also take a, a candidate from the south. Now, when when they see that opportunity to us as southerners, the operators, the stakeholders, the leaders, the chieftains of the party may sit down to say, "Can't we do consensus arrangement?" Now that it is now south. that it is in the south, yes. Then, that way, they can commence the process of discussion for consensus. And if, per adventure, the consensus fails, then who says they can go to an election? The South Eastern can, Eastern can, can, can win the ticket. We have good candidates there. Yeah. So, nobody say, oh, it's about merit, it's about competence. Angela, there is no way in this country where you don't have the competence, the merit, and all of that. How do you marry, how do you vote, uh, uh, underscore merit or competence when the person has not been given opportunity. Yeah. We should be interrogating what they are doing in their respective states now, mm. those who are governors and those who are not governors, what they did before, mm. so that we can also interrogate what, whether they, are, they have the competence to lead the country. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And when they have not had that opportunity, then they need to participate, they need to perform before we begin to talk about merit and competence. But we have people who are presently governors from the South who have been well. We can use that one to, as a basis to, to measure their performance. Yes. Having Northern President for 16 unbroken years in the North. Kai, Angela. You think Nigeria will recover from Nigeria that? Nigeria will implode. I can tell you that for free. I'm old enough, I'm networked enough in the system to know that for a plural society like Nigeria, that sense of belonging is key to driving the national narrative. And if you are unable to build national cohesion, it will lead to polarization. 
And once it, the country is polarized on ethnic and religious lines, you are likely going to have national anomie. And when you have national anomie, anarchy sets in. And when anarchy sets in, it's your, to your tent, O Israel. Join us again after the break. Now, I wanted your opinion as well on religion. You mentioned religion, you mentioned ethnicity earlier on. Um, should the next president be a Christian? And is age a factor? Well, when I was uh, taking up Elijah Tiku Abaka, I used age as one of the criteria. And okay. someone called me and said, no. Uh, Biden, Biden is 78. Is yes, Trump was 74. Trump was 74. This day I, said, I was just laughing. How can you compare darkness and light? Age in America is different to that of Nigeria. In Nigeria, our leaders, because of the numerous crises in the system, they have become fatigued at 77. Angela, I don't, I don't pray to be running around campaigning for election at 77. No. They are fatigued. We don't want Asso Rock to become a retirement home for the aged. I want to grow old and be a responsible father to my grandchildren. So, back to your question. Yes. The president of this country in 2023 should be a Christian. You need to balance the algorithm. I keep saying this. Yes. Be a Christian from the South. Because... People are already introducing the sentiments of religion, which also has brought up the word religious bigotry. So that brings us to the matter now of the aspirants, those who have actually declared uh, that they want to participate um, in the race. Yeah. For instance, you know, let's look at the APC. Uh, on uh, Monday the 10th of uh, April, the current vice president declared. The Friday before that, uh, the minister for transportation, uh, Rutimi Amechi, he also declared. And Amechi comes with a lot of history. He's been speaker for eight years, governor for eight years, now minister for seven years. He's representing the South-South, but some people say maybe his uh, candidacy will satisfy the people of Igbo extraction because his middle name is Chibweke. And then, of course, we have other people um, we, we, within the APC all, all aspiring. We also have the former Lagos State uh, Governor, uh, Bola Tinumbu, uh, coming in. He's a Muslim. So if we say that the next president should be Southern, the APC has considered that Buhari being a Muslim, the next president should be Christian, why are we seeing people who are Muslim still throwing their hats in the ring? That's mine, mine is just a matter of opinion. I'm not in the minds of people who will decide their fate in their primaries. The delegates will vote. And based on your ability to network the delegates, yes. the outcome may be. But uh, interrogating the aspirants of the APC, I do not personally think that a Rotimi Amechi, for example, has the mental stability to preside over this country. Why not? He's quick to temper. He's temperamental. Temperamental. Mm -hmm. The little I've seen of him, he's my friend. But just look at when he went to the train attack. He is part and parcel of the pro process. It is part of the federal government that has crippled Nigeria up to this rubble, uh, to, to this level. Now, he tells you, oh, you see, I told them to approve XYZ of money so that we can do uh, security surveillance on the, tra on the, on the rail track. They didn't. They play politics with it and all of that. Look, look at what has landed. Can that money go to the lives the we have lost now and all of that? Leaders don't speak like that. Yes, but 
What, what about see, if he was coming from a place of frustration? You see, let me tell you. you, you but he was coming from a point of frustration. But when we now read the memo of why that contract <laughs> was refused, yes. you could see a company that has 84 million naira turnover asking to do a contract of 3.2 billion. Yes. Come on. A, com a, com a company that was registered in 2019. And the procurement and, act and is the, clear. It's very these clear on all of, all of yeah. this. And the company that was registered in 2019 wanted to do that kind of contract. And you want the money to be paid all front. Because the company does not have the financial way with that to execute that kind of job. For God's sake. Can't you be fair for once? Did you hear him talk again? Rather than even paper down the tempers. You know, in the polity. Barely five days later, he went to declare that he wants to be president of Nigeria. Come on, who are your advisors? Nobody does that. The timing of his declaration was completely wrong. And he loaded the Amase, Amase Maker Stadium in Papa Court to cap full capacity and he was running around. Are you run, running, uh, running on top of the graves of those who were killed? Or the 167 that are still being kept in captivity? Come on, we should show some level of uh, emotional intelligence when we do things. Mm. We are talking about Nigerians, we are talking about life. Is your ambition more, more important to do than the, those who have been killed or those who have been kept in captivity? Can't even say, because I have failed in this aspect and we have failed in this, thing, I'm not going to run? What is this craze? What is this craze about power? Mm. You understand? I understand quite clearly that power is a crazy aphrodisiac. Everybody will want to make, they say it makes men blind to their intentions. But for God's sake, if you possess the emotional intelligence, you will have the stability of mind to be able to react hmm. to situations when they occur. Yes. And for an Amechi to go and declare an aspiration to govern this country, when the country was still mourning, for me, is a carriage of excess kindness, which anybody does not need at this point. Right. It's a slap on our collective faces. If you like, call it Bianca slap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so uh, I want your opinion on this. The vice president. There's been a lot of um, reaction um, from I hope people. You know, I hope you know, before you ask your question, I hope you know that I'm a member of PDP. I know. And that I'm not going to be advertising or selling an aspirant no I'm, I'm i'm not bringing but in there if, if i'm talking from the point of view of the individuals yes i will say that the vice president you well, think do you see it as a betrayal that's where i'm going because a lot of people are talking about betrayal he's a traitor uh, if someone is your mentor and your godfather you shouldn't go up against him my argument is this if a man gets to the post of a vice president you know, and another man who is his mentor only ended up at the post of a governor. What other aspiration is left for a vice president? I don't see a vice president heading to the Senate or to the House of Representatives or even wanting to be a minister. The only logical place for a vice president to go next is the presidency. But supporters of former Lagos governor you know, will see it as a betrayal do you agree that he has betrayed? Well, uh, I'm going to raise three points. Yes. While interrogating Professor Yemi Oshibando. And in raising those points, first, he has a right under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to aspire to any position. The point of betrayal is on the aspect of morality or lack of it. You see, the point is, for him and the circumstances that threw him up or gave him some level of political ascendancy, yes. I will expect that he's, he's been able to rub minds with his benefactor, Bola Metinubu in this instance, reach a conclusion with him before declaration. Yes. If he didn't do that, well, to some extent, those who are saying it's betrayal, that aspect may hold water. What if he did and the well, other one let, says... Let, let me... Let me. Okay, the nah. other point is, Osiba's aspiration 
It's also, it's also going to be a hard sell. Why? You know why? Hard sell in the sense that he's, he's been unable to insulate himself away from the Buhari halitosis. The Buhari's bad market politics, so to speak. You know, when you see, when you see or uh, listen to his declaration speech, that, that introductory part of it eh, slaughtered the entire speech. Because Nigerians are trying to see an individual who will be man enough to look at the system in place and say, no, we haven't gotten it right. Perhaps because I have been a vice president who is unable to take decisions or self-delegated, we have found ourselves in this called the sack. Mm. At any rate, we may not lose hope because there is a tendency for me to interrogate issues better than what we currently have. You see, when you have individuals who cannot look at their bosses' face to tell them the whole plain truth, who are afraid to lose their position because of what they benefit, I don't know. I find problem and I find quarrel with that. Go and ask anybody who served in the government when I was there. As a commissioner, even as a special advisor, I interrogated Adam Sushumoli. When he started to take a decision, I said, no, you can't take this kind of decision because this is the positive, these are the negatives. But you and I will not go, I'm not going to be part and parcel of you. If you go ahead and take the decision, the backlash, tell your other persons to manage the backlash. I, I said, will not be part of it. Do you think it would have been, it would have looked good to the vice president to throw President Buhari under the bus in his declaration speech so publicly? You see, the vice president is contesting for president. President Buhari is not going to contest for president again. again. President Buhari is also a bad market for any aspirant who wants to think that oh, they will continue from where Buhari stopped. We are suffering bad leadership. We are suffering from incompetence. We are suffering from cluelessness. We are suffering from, you know, poor policy implementation. ASU has been on strike for all, all, only God knows when. Our university education is dying. And we sit down here and we keep talking. This is the bedrock of any nation. Where is our science academy? What are they turning out? We are a consuming nation. They are borrowing left, right, and center night and day. Trade that money presided over by Levi Oshibajo. Where, where has that taken on? Has it brought some level of financial inclusion amongst the uh, informal sector? Mm. These are the issues. So when you want to talk, because you want to contest a president, yes. let Nigerians see you as Yemi Oshibajo, as an aspirant, not Yemi Oshibajo, the vice president. That's why I said that speech, or whoever wrote a speech for him, did damage to him. That's the truth. Because you look at, you take away the Yemi Osman that is vice president, you put him as the Yemi Osman the aspirant. What are your strong selling points? He's a professor. The second point is an articulate middle-aged man. The third point, he understands the issues. The fourth point, he can be a man of himself. Yes. The few times he was acting president, he took far reaching decisions that tend to suggest that this man, if given an opportunity to be president, he can make sense and out of it. The people did not see that in his declarations. No, they didn't see that. Even you and I, we didn't see that. We saw a man who was telling us about the president, where is integrity? What integrity? Integrity, my foot. You know? They're talking about the presidency as a patriotic Nigerian and other patriotism. Yeah. What kind of patriotism is that? How do you define it? Hmm. Yeah, telling, you, telling you Nigeria that like you have traveled far away Nigeria now. In, in just places you are traveling, what are you seeing? You are seeing blood everywhere. Kidnapping. Economic dislocation. IDPs. Internally displaced persons. That's what you see everywhere in Nigeria. You, everywhere you go in Nigeria. Insecurity everywhere. Even these days, is it not curious that you are not even hearing of armed robbery again? What you hear is armed kidnapping and armed banditry. <laughs> are you not surprised? You, we used to dread armed robbery. But these days, it's, it's, it's little talked about. Mm. People now talk about kidnapping. They talk about banditry. They want to speak to President Buhari 
167 being kept uh, in captivity. Since the training Since incident. the training incident. Yeah. They said they want to talk to President Buhari. They don't want to talk to anybody. They are not asking for ransom. Are you, getting, are you saying something? There's some level of conspiracy. So, I want to see an individual who can come, up, come forward with, you know, uh, tested solutions mm. to our problems. How do we solve insecurity? Osman is the part and parcel of the process. What is he going to do differently that this government is not doing? It's, not, it's a big problem. It is, because but, but then that question... Sorry, him. That question will go to anyone coming from the APC. Of course. It is easier for anyone to take this government to task because the government has been the one on the throne mm. since 2015. Yes. And Osibando is part and parcel of it. It's a giant ticket, isn't it? Mm. So, whatever, if you blame President Buhari, you must blame Osibando. That's why I tell you that it's a big problem because it will be difficult for people to insulate him away from the image of, an, of, a, of a Buhari, mm. who is seen as a nepotist, mm. who, who people accuse of uh, uh, favoritism, cronyism, or what have you. Yes. In, even in terms of appointments, in terms of projects, in terms of policy. Mm. Go to the other today and see the number of projects that have that lined up in that place. Mm. Uh, and what is, what is the contribution of uh, that community to the entire country? Yeah. On the final note, Mr. Febwa, who do you see in the final analysis PDP candidate and the APC candidate. Who do you think will emerge? Just look no, at that. It's not, it's, not, it's not about who will emerge. You see, I'm a, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of PDP. I, I like to be a member, just a member, so that I can interrogate anybody in the party. Whether you are the chairman, you are the, I, can speak, mm. I can speak my mind. Yes. Because, you see, I, I, I've gone past the stage where people will say, ah, no, 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 why are you, why are you criticizing the chairman? Is it? If a chairman of a party is not doing what well, you speak to him, if you speak to him in private, he's not listening, you speak to him in public. It's about our country. What is of privacy to me? It's about the wellness of my country. How many people are able to wake up in the morning and they are able to make a living out of their legitimate aspirations? If you look at the World Bank classification of the poor of the poor, and why they classify Nigeria as the poverty capital of the world. Angela, you will shed tears. We are talking about a family of five, for example. The food at home can only feed two out of the five. Then, the mother and father, they now ration. These are our two youngest children. Let them eat this one. Let us go and hustle. Whatever we get, we we'll give to the third. Then before we can we consider ourselves. ourselves. Yes. We're talking about a situation where education, access to education, a child will have to trek some 10 kilometers to get to the nearest school. Or you want to see the kind of shanty that was displayed on Facebook a couple of days back in Kogi State, mm. one community like that. Yes. Under, under, under a shanty and those yes. children. Those kind of scenarios. So these scenarios permeate the length and breadth of Nigeria is the reason why they call it the poverty capital. Because those who are going through these kind of situations are in millions. You say about 100 million people. And, the, and then you ask yourself, what is the government policy to address these critical sectors of the economy? The education of the rural, okay. the health of the rural, the sick, no hospital, no dispensary to go. Water supply, housing. They are living in shanty. Even the space available cannot accommodate a family of four. They sleep on top of themselves. When it's rainy, it's dripping down. These are all scenarios that this current government has not been able to address. So, for us, for me, I want an individual who can speak or take action and will be sentimental. I am not close to Wiki, but I like and I love his style. Mm. I like people who have guts, who are not carried away by their own position, who speak to us like ordinary citizens, yeah. who can go on the streets, bare feet, and confront situations. When I saw him entering the forest to go and stop bunkering, 
and those who are committing that kind of crime in River State? I said, yes. This is my kind of person. I want a man who can test out and pick bullets for me and for the entire citizen. Who is not afraid to die for a cause? Just like Zelensky of Ukraine. Who says, no, I'm not going to follow your corridor of escape. And rather, chose to remain even within God that he wants to go and confront Russia invasion. Yes. So, those kind of leaders are rare. And that's, that's, that's the kind of person I've seen in Wiki. I, they've been accusing me of being his lucky. Oh, oh, is the one sponsoring him. Please, when you see him, tell him that I want him to sponsor me. <laughs> to, 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 to speak truth to power. No, they are not interrogating what I am saying. They know I'm not telling lies. But the convenient way to blackmail me is always being sponsored by Wiki. And so what? I want to be sponsored so I can speak truth to power. I can speak the minds of the voiceless millions out there who have been exploited year up over years, you know, by economic buccaneers, you know, who are masquerading as politicians, going about contesting and becoming perpetual uh, aspirants <laughs> and candidates. So for me, I want to see a new Nigeria in 2023. And the man who has the gravitas, the great, and your common guts to look at you in the face and say, Angela, you have stolen two billion naira. Go and return it now before I take you up. Go and refund that money now, now, now. And not the one who will say, Angela, <laughs> you know, you have stolen two billion. Just return 100, 100 million. The many who have signed this one to this place, uh, take care of my wife's oh. interest. Take care of my daughter, son. It's in UK and all that. That's not the kind of leader I want. So leaders who we cannot know their body language, who cannot speak when the issues are burning, they are not my kind of leaders. And it is the unfortunate scenario we find ourselves under Buhari presidency. Because for him to speak against banditry was a problem. For them to condemn uh, harders who are killing farmers in their farms and all that was a problem. He even came about and said that he was going to retool the law, 1960 law, of uh, Hadas uh, grazing routes across the country. My God, 21st century, you are still engaged in just some barbaric and primitive uh, animal husbandry? No. This is the age of uh, grazing. You know, not open grazing. Ranching. Ranch them. You ranch them. They produce more for you. Even the quality of the milk will be more profound than what you get now. Even the cows in Nigeria are complaining. Too much of tracking. They killed them in the process. A, a, a man was killed in Gogolada area. This is the chairman of uh, Magma Mieti Allah. You know, because they said they went to sell cows when he was coming with the money and all that. You see, everybody is complaining. Cows are complaining. Goats are complaining. Everybody. Because of insecurity. Mm. And we have a, 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 a president who hardly talks to us. Mm -hmm. A monologue cannot help the cause of the aspirations of 200 million Nigerians who are very, very active you know, active population going everywhere and all of that. So, 2023, I pray that PDP wins. Thank you for because that is the you. only party that personally resonate hope. And you know why? APC even to organize convention was a problem. The government was confused. The party was confused. And as we speak now, the party is still confused. They don't know how to solve the problems they left behind. They are still just, it's not like bottled anger, you know, mm. here and there. The, the government in place is still confused. The, the good thing you will give to this government, they are experts in condolence letter writing. They know how to write condolence messages. Aye, they have a template. And the second thing, they know how to do good. Bad days. Anybody who is doing bad days, they know how to write. <laughs> but let them speak to us on issues. They will be insulting us. They will tell us, heaven will not fall. Oh, first scarcity. Heaven will not fall. It has happened before. Who, 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 how can you be detained by the past? We are talking about Nigeria of today. You imparted at your treasure fuel. Has the broad road. Did you hear that anybody was sacked or fired? That cannot happen under a wicked presidency. Hmm. He will fire 
the person and went to the person to face the full wrath of the law. We were queuing up here. The president went, uh, national grid collapsed. The president left here, went to London to go and take care of his health. He's like telling you people, uh, if you people can, if you like, shout from that to that kingdom come. Let me go and take care of myself, medical tourism. This is the same president who told us in 2015 that why would he be traveling overseas to go and seek medical help? Today, seven years after, Angela, no one legacy health sector hospital that can take care of the health needs of the president that we have. Even our soul clinic, the one they told us, the, the wife complained at some point that the, 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 the budget money, they, they don't see the money. So, what is our problem? What is wrong with us? You can't come out clean. Is it about integrity? Who wants to do what? Who wants to eat integrity? Is integrity a menu that I'm going to serve my family in the house? Who cares about your personal integrity? What's the meaning of that? Corruption is all over the place, walking on the streets of this country. I hear you people go, what do people hear? The president is a man of integrity. Integrity, how do you define it? Thank you very much for speaking with me today, Mr. Febwa. It's been Angela, it's been a pleasure, you know. <laughs> I can tell you that the way I'm born in inside yes. me yeah, is because I do not I do not have any other country I can call my own. Mm. I don't have a second passport. I don't intend to have it. I want to live and die in this country. But I want a country where my my two lovely daughters will have a say. They can sleep without the fear of somebody bubbling the house. Mm. And thank you for watching. I'm Angela Ajitumobi.